request are two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet and from you, the listener. My name is Professor Will McBurney. And my name is Professor Mark Sheriff. And Will, oh, my, my, my wife has started a, a new job, which is very exciting. Right. She's, she's gone back to being an elementary school librarian. And she always has these projects that need mm-hmm. to take place whenever she, I, I did many of these at her old library. This one, I was, you know, installing some curtain rods mm-hmm. and I was, so I was hemming some curtains and trimming those off. And this last one she's making, which is very cool. She's making her own library cards for her kids mm-hmm. and she's, she's actually making them with, with looking sticks, but she needs something to keep them in. Right. So if you, do you know what a looking stick is? No oh, you gave idea me a look whatsoever. There. Oh, okay. So what they teach kids to do stick nowadays? That you look through, aka a telescope. Close, not really. Um, so uh, you're in a library and you're you're looking for books and you pull mm-hmm. a book off the shelf, and now you're you know a second grader. Does the second grader necessarily know exactly where that book came from right. after they flip through it? So they are taught to put the stick, which is just like a paint stirrer. Right. The, they put uh, the paint stirrer yeah. in, take out the book. So it actually has their checkout barcode on the paint stirrer, which is brilliant. So they are mm-hmm. checking out the books and they check out. Well, she decides she wants to keep these in Pringles cans, a different Pringles can for each class. I mean, mm-hmm. she puts a nice wrapper around it. So it's cool. So she has it for every class. And so she needed 18 Pringles cans and so we bought lots of Pringles, and I have made some life decisions regarding vis-a-vis <laughs> Pringles that I am currently regret greatly. No. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. So, so what you're know. saying is the looking sticks are bookmarks? Get it? Marks for where the book is. All right. Yeah, that was a, yeah, that, I had to no, make that, that joke. No. Sorry. No, that, that, that works. That works. Uh, How have you been doing? Also, uh, what flavor of Pringles? Well, okay. Uh, I, I I did switch over to the uh, sour cream and onion. Although I hope that's not flavored the looking stick. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, wait. So you just got all one flavor? You got to mix them up. You know. Why? Well, I, I can get some like original a pizza and... with a barbecue. It's actually, it's actually pretty good. Oh, I'm getting some pro tips here. Yeah. How do you? How do you? Well, see, the other thing about Pringles is you can only. I I I have one way I'm allowed to eat a Pringle, which is. You, you you rest your tongue upon the mm-hmm. the divot in yeah. the bottom and you and then eat you it crush in one it against go. the roof roof of your mouth yeah and you crush it against yeah. the roof of your mouth this is the only way this is the way yeah um, the or way. you do du- you do duck face that's the other one but uh, that that one's much harder oh, to manage old, old, more old school it's kind of falling it's more out old of favor school. yeah you know it's it, it's not quite as not quite as handy anything interesting in in your land um I'm 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 Trying to play Death Loop and failing, not 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 due to any negativity on the side of Death Loop. The game's great. I just haven't had any time. Yeah. Um, Can you believe we're in the fifth week of the semester already? God, I was hoping we were in like the seventh or eighth. Because <laughs> that's, that's what it felt like. Well, I, and and th- this is this is not one of my questions. But I was going through the professor's subreddit and someone mm-hmm. made this comment. And this comment is haunting me still right now, which is, can we all take a moment and imagine what it would have been like to be a professor before email? Oh, it sounds so lovely. It does. It uh, You know, considering how much how many different ways our students have to communicate with us, whether it be through Discord or Piazza or email or and no matter you know, how much I tell them, if they need to communicate with me personally, use email, they will use everything but email. Up to and including throwing paper airplanes at me from across the room with vague messages written upon them. Send me Wait, a tre- what? They'll send me a treasure map. They send me out into <laughs> oh, a okay. into a field to dig up a treasure chest, and inside uh, is, you know, some vague question about some concept that I have to then ask for clarification on. Well, now what we get is. Instead of a, instead of the students giving us like a detailed error, error message or description of their problem, they just take a screenshot and they post the screenshot into Piazza. And I'm like, mm-hmm. what do you want me to do with this? Yeah. Oh my god, I get you that sweet a lot children! Too. In 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 our intro programming class, we have a lot of automated testing, and each of the tests that fail, I custom wrote a message for that er- for that error. To, to help the students, which of course none of them read, and well, considering you made most of them, hey, you suck. You should stop programming. <laughs> you know that's probably 
No, or your it, problem. It, it'll be it'll be things like oh, I got like literally I'll get a Piazza post and it'll be like this will be the whole post. I got an error when I submitted my homework, but I know my code works. Should I just submit a regrade request? <laughs> no further information will be given than that. Literally, like, and they'll post anonymously, but luckily, like, you know, we, we have the setting where professors can see who the poster mm-hmm. is, so I can then look it up. But, like, I have to then look oh, up brilliant. their error message and then tell them, like, hey, you know, this error message is not not a polite suggestion. <laughs> and and you and, and you should also read it. Uh, I haven't gotten any parent calls yet. I haven't gotten any parent calls yet. So you know, I'll I'll, I'll keep that one in the win column for the I first two five in weeks. The first week, <laughs> you got two in the first week. Yep. Oh man, I mean, we don't need to go into that now. But wow. Yeah, I I just my general response is, hey, Ferpa. Anyway, have a nice life. <laughs> um. Uh, not not Should not get- worded as brusquely, but I I I want to say it that way. Anyway, I, I've start I've started to pick up on the McBurneyism of uh I'm a little pissed off here as my short terse I've seen not with me yeah. maybe with me maybe I just haven't noticed it yet but I have seen it and so I've started to pick up on on the tells here. Yeah. So. I, well, the the other side of it too though is I I actually do try to respond. In, in short sentences when feasible. And some people take that as as me trying to be terse when I'm not. And and part of that, I think, is just a text medium is not always great for that type of thing. Mm. Um, Imagine before email. Yeah. Imagine before email. How about we, you know, we, we, we've been doing some themed episodes. Yeah. You, want, you want to get back to our roots? Let's, you know, now that I, yeah. our, our long-standing 16-episode podcast, back to our... Mm-hmm original yeah. looking at some questions well you you remember y2k right i do i i actually vividly remember sitting in my living room mm-hmm. on january 1st watching the news and seeing someone in i think it was australia or or somewhere that they had gone to an atm and taken out 20 20 dollars and showed the receipt like look i got money and the world was like yeah yeah and we went on with about our life but I was actually an intern at a bank mm-hmm. um, just after Y2K. It was one of my summer internships. And there was a lot, there was still a lot of discussion about how in the world do they update the, the COBOL code to handle mm-hmm. this horrible, horrible, horrible. So yes, I, I've definitely, I remember Y2K. Well, my first question relates to Y2K, but just to explain to those who maybe, who maybe don't remember or maybe aren't aware of like what specifically it was. The idea was a lot of date formats uh, at in in you know Dutch date, in computing double date, was, movie dates. Yeah, yeah, it would be something like M M D D Y Y. That is two digit month, two digit day, two digit year, which was a problem when you went from ninety nine to zero zero. If the way the date was used was you assumed you just sorted basically first by the year, then by the month, then by the day. So you could end up with a transaction that occurred on January 1st, 2000, being seen as uh, almost 100 years earlier than a transaction on December 31st, 1999, even though it was a day later. That's that's the basis of what of the nope, fears around Y2K. Yep. And, and that was done also at the mm-hmm. time because they felt the need to save as much memory as possible. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were literally... Yeah scraping every possible bite of memory because mm-hmm. i mean memory was extremely expensive now yeah. by the time we got to to that and to 2000 it wasn't nearly as much an issue fast forward to 2021 mm-hmm. we're just throwing memory right. everything it's not even it but some we consider but what about y2k but, 38 Whoa. are you familiar with y2k 38 or the year uh, to 2038 problem i was about to say is that the is that the hip remix band that's the new boy band yeah. out uh, coming out right after One Direction. Is that a boy band? I think Pretty it's a much. boy band. Y two K thirty eight. That actually sounds like a droid from Star Wars. Yeah. Um. It, no, it, it I'm would not be. A, it would, it'd probably be from the new trilogy, which is to say, it would look cool, but it, be ultimately it, very disappointing and meaningless. Is that the epoch? Epic? Epoch? Yes. So, so to explain what this is, we first need to talk about the fact that. 
Beyond representing a date, you can represent a time. And rather than representing it in something that is human recognizable, which, for example, to say something like, I mean, we're recording this now, 10.03 p.m., or maybe you'd say uh, 22.03, if you were using a uh, 24-hour clock, um, on September 21st, 2001. Rather than use something human Do recognizable. Do you remember? The September 21st, yeah. Earth, uh, Wind, and uh, Fire. Okay, sorry. Oh, that's right, yeah. No, it took me a minute. Yeah, no, my band my band played that at one point in high school as one of our halftime things. Um, but there's another way to represent the date time, and that is seconds since a particular moment. And that moment, uh, w- which is in, in Unix, was chosen to be January 1st, 1970. The, the zeroth second of the day, midnight on January 1st, 1970. Because that way, is when the artificial intelligence started. Yes, that is, that is when Skynet... Is, it was very slow at first. It's still, it's still, <laughs> very, still, work, very still working its way. Uh, still work, no. Um, and so the way time is kept on the Unix system is that it counts the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. Now you may be thinking, wow, a lot of seconds that have, have passed since then. Uh, so what is the Unix time right now? Um, I should have actually had this pulled up ahead of time because I thought it would be easier to find. <laughs> we can have a race for it. I launch my, right, here my it Unix window. Right now, oh, you beat me. it has okay. been. So, so again, how many seconds has it been? It's not probably as many as, as your initial suspicion would think, although it's not a small number. It is 1,632,276,347,89, etc. I was hoping you were going to let me guess. I was going to guess 2 billion. That was my yeah. guess, was okay. going to 2 billion. So well, I, I, feel, yeah, not, I feel vindicated. Not far off. About 1.6 billion right now. Yeah, yeah okay. Now, keep in mind that Unix time ignores leap seconds. Um, so, okay. so when we have a, you know, when we have a leap second, which is just used to try to keep the clock in line with the 24 hour clock by just adding leap seconds here and there, since the Earth, the Earth's solar day is, you know, slowing down over time. Um, so, so it ignores that. So whenever a leap second happens, it just repeats the same second twice. So that way it keeps the same number of seconds a day. So again, about 1.6 billion. The thing is, that's actually starting to run into a problem. And as we know, everything in computers, we like to base it around the number two. I imagine you can guess then, uh, you might be able to guess what problem is coming up. Uh, around the year 2038. You remember if it's... if it's Well, I'm guessing, I'm guessing it's a power of two. Yeah. It's like the number, it's like, it's like... Uh, two billion something would be an unsigned integer. The thing is, time is not unsigned. It's a signed thirty-two bit integer. Okay, I was close. Yeah, kind of. And so, the largest number possible, uh, and this is this is actually the same as the largest number possible with the int data type in in Java and, and C, is about two point one five billion. Technically. 2,147,483,647, roughly 2.15 billion. Which, you know, all things considered, we're not that far from. When will we hit it? Well, we will hit that uh, at 3 in the morning on January 19th, 2038. And this is a problem because after that, we have the Y2K problem again. The problem of a date rollover. Specifically, because that first bit is the sign bit, that means that it will stop thinking that we are after 1970 and before 1970. In fact, it will, in theory, be equivalent to being the 13th of December, 1901. And a lot of older 32-bit systems still use this date mechanic. Um... So, in, in the year 2038, there could be some concerns. And in fact, people have been able to test this to find this problem. Because hmm. you can try to modify, for example, the timestamp of a file. 
or uh, in in you know in in games, for example, they may try to if the game has a mechanic of oh wait one hour for this for this to happen, you can go in and change the top the you know, change your system's clock, reboot the game, and hey look, an hour's passed and it only took five seconds. Well, people have been able to test this to in the same way change the timestamp to after this uh, this January day in twenty thirty eight, and it breaks things. Oh no! It breaks things. And see at this point. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I, you know, I just you know, spitballing solutions. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it seems to me that if there isn't a permanent, and I actually, I've, I, I, maybe you've done the research into this, mm-hmm. and if they've changed date mechanic going forward, but it seems to me that we end up with effectively like a sliding fifty-year window mm-hmm. that every ten years or so, or whatever you lop off a, a few hundred million and then do it all again. Mm-hmm. Is that because what you're, yeah. No, I, I doubt there are any computers from, I doubt there are not many computers that mm-hmm. are, are still online from 1970. Right. Well, I mean, but there is software that's online from them. I mean, let, let's not forget there's, there's code in, in, you know, air traffic control systems that were written in the sixties. And so that software, which is designed to run on specific hardware, may still have that problem. That's true. Um, one issue is that this is just an inherent problem with standards in general, the, which, you know, we have to have standards for very real reasons. You know, if you had no standard for how much electricity would come out of your, your wall outlet, then you'd have a problem because you know, good to fair chance you plug something in and it just immediately explodes or doesn't have enough power to work. So Both are bad. Right. So we we set up a standard to say, okay, in the the U.S., it's going to be 110 volts of electricity when you plug into the wall outlet. That standard is different in Europe, where it's 220. I thought it was 120 volts. It's 120 volts in... Okay. I'm not an electrical engineer. I don't know. I'll plug things in the wall. Things turn on. I thought it was 110 to 120 and technically... In Europe, it's like 220 to 240 or something like that. But uh, it's a higher voltage, but it, that lets it be a lower amperage, which is actually safer, it turns out. Um, but the point is, standards eventually become not just a benefit, but they can become a hindrance. In this case, oh, mm-hmm. hey, well, let's just use this standard for date time, which you know gives us time and seconds in a way that computers can easily deal with a single number so you, mm-hmm. you, know, you compare two timestamps, you just compare two integers. Easy enough. Very easy. Yeah, yeah, M- yeah. Much easier than trying to do all the textual regular expression ma- matching crap, right? But true. now 2038 comes around, and, and 32-bit systems, which use 32-bit timestamps, are running into issues. One solution is, and this is already a solution that's well underway, more and more computers are, are uh, 64-bit. Which means they uh-huh. use a 64-bit timestamp. Which, if you use the same limitation, um, I mean, it still gives you a limitation. With 64 bits, there is a maximum timestamp, uh, but it uh, it would be several times the estimated current age of the universe. Yes, yeah, exactly. so it would be <laughs> billions. And actually, it turns out, however, that what you would run into isn't um, not isn't a limitation of the the 64 bits that is 64 two to the 64 seconds it would actually be that you'd still need to be able to represent a year and most systems still use an unsigned integer for the year so you'd actually only get to about the year 2,147,485,547 which is 1900 plus the 2, two to the power of 31 so the point is what you'd still what sort be good of word for we're about 2 our billion years give or take <laughs> <laughs> well, when 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 cyber dinosaurs unearth us and they are trying to decode our our software systems, mm-hmm. they'll still be able to boot them up. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's perfect. But, but there are some, you know, there are some legacy systems that we do rely on that are going to um, run into problems potentially in the year twenty thirty eight, and it's going to be hard to predict. Just like it was hard to predict with Y two K. There were a lot of things that were overestimated to, to be difficult. But this is the point that all standards eventually can become limiting. 
and and so you got to be careful when 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 making standards and mm -hmm. you have to recognize maybe when a standard needs to change very true you know when i was going to look for my questions um i was in a silly mood all right so let's do the uh, here here's one for you this comes to us from no stupid questions subreddit asked by Darth Boney off to a great start <laughs> off to a great start and Darth Boney wants to know are bananas peeling differently than they used to look I know this is dumb but I eat bananas nearly every day and over the last few months I've noticed they're not peeling the way they used to I break the tarp top part completely off all the time now and that's never happened before gone are the days of four symmetrical flops guarding my hand whilst I stab myself in the mouth with the flaccid sort of tasty why is this <laughs> well, <laughs> there, no, I mean, the, the, so, so there's, there are some things, I don't know exactly if there's an answer to this peeling question, because uh, what I do know is that bananas at the grocery store are genetically identical. Uh, that is to say that they are exactly the same banana as any other, it's just, you know, Grown off a different branch or grown off a different tree, and I do believe that sometime it was maybe it was the early '90s or so. the The banana changed because you know when you have a large quantity of genetically identical things, it tends to be a breeding ground, uh, a breeding ground for a predator. In this case, a fungus, a banana fungus. And so I believe it was sometime in the early '90s or maybe it was later, where the common dessert banana, which is which is what it's called, actually changed to a different genetic banana because the fungus had just destroyed the, the previous population. Is that related? I come here bringing, bringing the silly question where we can talk about how we peel a banana and throw the banana peel and it's, it's represented in popular meat or anything like that. You bring this Dr. Moreau of bananas to hit me with the genetic code. And uh, I am I am impressed. I am flabbergasted. And the answer, the only answer, the only answer given on no stupid questions was, I don't know, wait a year or so. Maybe it's a seasonal thing. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I can't disagree with that one either. I don't know anything about bananas. It just made me happy to know that there was someone <laughs> out there that carried that cared that much about the appropriate floppiness of their banana here's a real thing to talk about although bananas are a real thing i do i i, I enjoy them very on, much hang on, hang on. let me look this up let me look this up are you gonna look up the on, bananas okay okay i i have confirmed bananas are a real thing bananas confirmed they are a real fruit how do you feel about operating system upgrades as i switch topics absolutely on a dime um is this going to come back to bananas or? <laughs> <laughs> so there's this new flavor of, of Unix, <laughs> Banana OS. Oh. Uh, well, I, I guess, I mean, you know. Are you an instant upgrader? Here's the question. Yeah. Are you the person who's like, oh, man, there's the new version of something coming out. I'm going to jump on this right now. Like, for instance, mm -hmm. the new version of iOS is, is, is out or is about to come out mm -hmm. based upon when you're listening to this or based on when some people are listening to this have been it's been out for you know years. Right. Um, and, and, you know, I I was always the person who was waiting for the newest version of Mac OS. Like, I can't wait for this to come down. Are you the, I need to wait and see if this is going to blow things up? Or are you yeah. the, no, cutting edge. I want I want to be right on the, right on the cusp. I get, so I'm, I'm of two minds about this. Normally, I would actually just wait and see if it, if things break. There are, so with my home computer, I, I, I primarily use it for gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, my home desktop, and there are some features in Windows 11 which have me very excited. It effectively is enabling the thing that that PS5 and Xbox what or X, whatever Xbox is called. I I honestly can't remember. Uh, but Series the X? Series X? Yeah, that's it. Because yeah. uh, it was Xbox and then 360 and then one because counting is hard, and then one X and then one S, and I I don't know. But they they are able to use uh, an SSD, which is a solid state drive. It's like, a, it, it's, 
like a hard drive, except it uses flash memory, so it's, it's very, very fast, and they can effectively use it like working memory, mm-hmm. uh, which, which allows for much faster load times from disk, but also effectively increasing the memory limit of, of the console at, at needed times. And Windows 11 is allowing that, which has and me wh- interested... But I still have a graphics card that's like eight years old, and I can't upgrade because 2021. So probably well, not. That, you you can't upgrade the the card, not the uh, operating system potentially. Yeah. But that but it is uh, it is OS 11. It is mm. Windows 11, not OS 11. That's Mac. It is Windows 11 that I want to talk about because for those of you that don't know, in two weeks from the time that we are recording on October 5th. Windows 11 is officially being released. It's going to be a free upgrade for anyone that is currently mm-hmm. running Windows 10. But there was a lot of confusion when Windows 11 was announced because they released on that time a PC health check app that you could download or run on your computer and it would tell you whether your machine was ready for Windows 11 or not. And one of the things it was specifically looking for was a later model processor cpu uh, intel or amd that had a certain security chip enabled in it now this is a good thing quote unquote in that they that microsoft is specifically trying to get people onto later chips such that you know try to increase the security of the software prevent data loss prevent identity theft things like that but windows 11 will run reasonably okay mm-hmm. on older machines and there's not really a need to upgrade it well it turns out today there's uh reporting out of uh the verge.com which is a great tech site if you, don't, if you don't happen to read there um that there's now a new pc health check app that they've released that will check one more time but now if it checks your machine and says that you don't have that particular security chip it'll say well we'll let you we'll let you install windows 11 but we might not give you any updates in the future. And so we're this. Yeah, exactly. That the, the mm. Bernie made a, 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 uh, oh, yeah, a quizzical yeah. face. Not, not great for a, for a, uh, for an audio, audio medium. medium. So this is one of those instances where I really think people need to look carefully at your workflow and look carefully at your needs. If you're a person who likes to live on the edge and you really want to have the latest and greatest, coolest new, Hey, if you if you really want the new start bar that is in the middle of the screen like a Mac as opposed to justified left as 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 was intended by Bill Gates back in Windows 98, 95 even. Um, yeah, you'll got that coming in Windows 11. But there is a lot of if, if you're not running a, a cutting edge machine, you might get put into an interesting, weird category here. So. Mm-hmm. This might be one where you might want to hold back just for a spell right. and see what happens. So that that I, little public service announcement, I suppose. Well, I know um, Windows Windows Vista was kind of a similar problem where it was very hardware taxing, and they mm-hmm. didn't do a good job letting people know that ahead of time, which led to a lot of issues around uh, Windows Vista. Um, yeah, I... The other thing I would say, though, is I teach intro programming and uh, I I won't upgrade my work computer just because I've seen every semester is like Mac releases an update. And oh, yeah, all the students coding setup breaks in the intro programming class and they don't have the expertise to fix it. So things just stop working and, you know, they kind of just shut down. And that happened last year while we were online is is I think it was Big Sur for Mac came out and just broke everyone's existing setups on Mac, which is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 137% of UVA students? 137? Just, you rounded that off? Yeah. I, it is not limited to intro students. When mm-hmm. I taught mobile development mm-hmm. in the fall, it was the worst. Yeah. Because every fall, around September, October... You know, Apple would announce a new iPhone with a new version of iOS and it would ruin everything that I was teaching because it would come out with a new version of the programming language or something like that. Spring was fine. Apple doesn't release new phones in the spring. It was not. (laughs) It wasn't an issue. Fall. It. Yeah. 
not so great. But Windows 11, I, I've actually installed it on a uh, spare laptop, and it's fine. Mm-hmm. It's it's it it's Windows wanting to be Mac ish, but it was also the early beta, and so you would go into certain menus, and all of a sudden it would it would whip you back to effectively Windows. Gosh, Windows Seven looking stuff, <laughs> just you know, really. It's like where did they pull the, these UI assets? It's like you know the land, you know, the home screen. The desktop, mm. the main menu bar, beautiful new sheen on it. <laughs> Go two levels deep in system config, and you might as well be writing code again. No. So, Windows updates. I'm sure are it's also, better now. Windows updates tend to also be a bigger deal just because of how big Microsoft is on preserving backwards compatibility, mm-hmm. which which Mac doesn't care at all. <laughs> they just don't. Well, particularly with iOS, the statistics show, and then, I mean, we, we would teach this the mobile class, mm-hmm. is that when you are building an iOS app, um, somewhere in the range of 90% of users are always using the latest version yep. of iOS. Whereas with Mac's Android, a fashion statement. Anyway. I'm sorry? Mac's a fashion statement. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, but with Android, when you built a new app, you had to build against multiple versions of Android. Right. So, anyway... All right. Well, now that we're talking about computer stuff, here's a question. Not bananas? I mean, do you want to go back to bananas? We can. I didn't know if you had a banana related question. No, not 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 offhand. Um, Although you could display a banana on one of these. That's right. OLED screen. So so you uh, (laughs) you 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 did you get the switch OLED or are you still waiting on release on that or? Oh, it's not. It, it comes out October fourteenth okay. or something. Yeah. So, so to to explain that the the OLED screen has OLED. uh has brighter colors, more vibrant colors. The mm-hmm. the light colors are brighter. The dark colors are darker. It just mm-hmm. looks nicer. It's not better graphics. The system otherwise has the same you know graphics, the same uh processor, everything. It's just it's a it's a screen. bigger screen. It's a bigger screen. There is a uh, uh, upgraded audio mm. capability, and I have I have one of the original switches, so this one has a better battery in it. Because yep. the battery upgrade happened a, a cycle ago, right. but yeah. still, it's a better battery, so you know can't count that out. Yeah. So that's a small screen, and and phones a lot now have OLED screens. I also have an OLED uh, television downstairs, you know, for for our living room. Um. Mm-hmm. But why aren't there as many OLED screens in the intermediate range? For example, computer monitor size, 21 inches, 24 inches, 30 inches, or even moderate size televisions, you know, moderate by by today's standards, of course. So we're talking like 32 inches is generally considered like a mid-range television size. Why are there so few OLEDs in that intermediate range, but so many small screens and then the high-end big screens? Why is that? That you know, I've never I've never contemplated that before. That's a very interesting point, because, you know, the typical IPS technology that's used for computer monitors, all I can think about is distance from screen slash refresh rate sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that that doesn't necessarily that argument doesn't necessarily hold when you're thinking about something like a portable gaming device. No, but it is smaller. Huh. Well, I so, have no so idea. The, the thing is, my, I, I will say from experience, my, my TV downstairs is completely fine for gaming in terms of refresh rate and, well, and, fair. and yeah, response. Okay. It's actually OLED is actually, I mean, it's not it's not as good as the, the very fast LCDs, but for for actually getting good color, like I have a I have a high speed, low input lag monitor. It just looks like crap if you're trying to, like, watch movies on it, because it's not about the color. It's about the responsiveness. Okay. Um, so if you if you rule those out, OLED is actually pretty much at at the high end of standards for that. Well, there's there's not so so there are a few answers to this because this was asked on Explain Like I'm Five. One of the things to take into account is is burn-in. OLEDs are more mm-hmm. susceptible to burn-in than um, other LEDs or LCD television screens. That's one factor. And when you're looking at a computer monitor, I permanently have this start bar on the bottom. And oh, my desktop yeah, has yeah, yeah. the applications. Generally, I don't move them around a lot. There's ways that you can address that. Um, 
you know, screensavers are one, of course. But that is one factor. Uh, burn-in does apply. Whereas cell phones, because the whole wind, you know, you you typically have the window doesn't really have a clear border and it's the whole screen. And same with the small portable screens. Um. With televisions, I will say that my my OLED downstairs, if I put on Netflix and I pause something, within like 15 seconds, it's already on the screensaver. It's really that fast. <clears throat> wow. And that's to prevent burn-in. Um, now, OLEDs aren't as bad as old plasmas used to be with burn-in, or the old type of projection CRT TVs could be, but it's still there. It's still a factor. So that's one uh, that and that limits to computer monitors, but that doesn't really limit to moderate sized televisions. So w- one user is suggesting, and I, th- and I think this is fair, is it comes down to market competition. Um, you can manufacture a very large number of small devices, and mm-hmm. with a small device, you're pretty much fixed to what size is the average pocket. Uh, if you're talking about a phone. <laughs> Or with okay. a switch, it's going to be a standard size. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Steam Dex is standard. It needs to be handheld size, and so the average hand does hasn't grown dramatically bigger uh, uh, over time. So the 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 standard <laughs> screen size citation needed. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's gone up as as the average human height has gone up, but I can't imagine that we're like have dramatically larger hands than our ancestors. Um. There's a Trump joke here, but we don't need to find it right now. Yeah, we don't. We we're, we're not going to look at it. <laughs> so the the fact is, if you're making a portable device, whether this is a cell phone, which you typically want to be average pocket size or smaller, or you know a switch which has a fixed size, uh-huh. you're not really competing against others in trying to make the bigger thing. And so, if you're going to make a competition, you can make a competition just by saying, "Hey, look." This is the phone with an OLED screen versus one without. Which one do you want? And so you can mark up the price for that higher definition, and people will pay for it because, well, if I'm going to get the if I if I'm stuck with this size, I might as well get the best definition I can with that size. Whereas if it okay. comes to a home television, that's typically you know, well, if if two if two TV you know if you're talking about a living room television, if two TVs are the same price but one is bigger. People will tend to want the bigger one unless there's a dramatic picture upgrade. And so if someone's looking to go for an economy television there, you know, that is to say in the in the price range of like 30 inches to 40 inches or maybe 45, they tend to be more motivated by price than they are motivated by high end picture quality. Once you once you start getting into enthusiast level, you're tending to have people who want larger screens anyway. Well, isn't there also a factor then, if you're thinking about TVs in that kind of more moderate range, Mm -hmm. I mean, not only are these going to be TVs that you're probably, you know, you are more price conscious about one. I think that's completely, that makes a ton of sense. But those are the type of TVs that you you are, you know, putting in the corner of a bedroom or something like that, where it's not like you're not looking for a cinema like experience exactly, here. Exactly. You just, you you just need to watch more episodes of lockup on MSNBC before you're going to bed sort of maneuver. Right. Right. And, um, I now know more about your bedtime routine. <laughs> we, had, I have not watched tell our, our television downstairs went away when we got the Guinea pig, the Guinea pig took over the TV area. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 Char- kind of, what, what kind of definition do you get on that? What's the input <laughs> lag on your Guinea pig? <laughs> Can your Guinea pig play crisis? <laughs> can it run crisis he's not a crisis he's an old he's an old grumpy can guinea pig doom? down now C- can your guinea pig run doom oh man there's gonna be so many good episode titles to choose from here no because you know we got a we got a a, a reasonable 4k tv that mm-hmm. is in the bedroom that is just for watching apparently olympics and occasionally daniel tiger is kind of all that we use it for now mm-hmm. um so, so I don't even know what the price points of television monitors. Are. I even called it a monitor. Televisions are mm-hmm. nowadays, um, but I know computer monitor prices because I bought three of those in the past right. <laughs> three months. <laughs> but, but anyway, but yeah. So, so you know, um, I I don't know where I got the lockup on MSNBC. Well, okay, that was from like twenty years ago, and that's what I would watch before going to bed. But, um, like you said with your OLED. 
Um, you want that in an, in an environment where you're trying to have a, you know, cinematic sort of right. experience. You've got the PS5 hooked up to that. That's where you're watching television and movies and things like that. So you are paying for that premium experience as opposed to the TV that you put, you know, in the corner of the kitchen or mm -hmm. I don't know. Where do you put TVs nowadays? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, you know, I'd say I agree. So I, I, we have the TV in the living room. I mean, technically we have a TV in our bedroom, but we haven't really used it lately. Uh, and, and by lately, I mean like in, much in the last year. So Yeah. All right. Well, do you have any, uh, any other questions for us? Oh, I went deep diving into no stupid questions. All right. I, I think we should, we're going to rapid fire some of these. Okay. This question is asked by user deleted. So I guess they're just not, they don't, they just don't want to own up to it. Is it possible to rob a house? I don't mean just breaking in and taking, I mean, taking the actual house. Mobile homes. I mean, they, it's literally well, in the name. So there, so there, so there's the obvious one. I mean, is you, you need, you need a getaway car with a tow hook. <laughs> so, um, some suggestions. Okay. Airlift. If it is, if it's a, like a prefab or, um, get, get, get some of those nice big army helicopters in there. What if, about if you have a helicopter, do you need to steal a prefab home? You have enough money to own a helicopter and you're stealing a prefab. It's, it's for the memes. You have to do it just for, just for the giggles. Um, I, I don't know the squatters rules. What if you could get in the house and <laughs> that's, that's, I guess that's one way to rob, to, to take the house. Um, if you, if you take the deed from someone mm -hmm. that this makes it sound more like we're in the wild west. I got your deed. I got mm -hmm. your horse. Get out of, get out of town. I mean, I don't know. There's still like the deed would work, but you'd have to also get like the city to verify that. You're the rightful owner of the deed. So that's going to take at least greasing a few palms. That it'd take a little bit more effort to steal that house here. Here's another question. This one's from Barry Thunderwood and it's all capitalized. So it is very intense. Barry Thunderwood. Why in the U S do you have to go to the dentist office for teeth cleaning? You don't have to go to a podiatrist for a pedicure. I feel like dentist offices should be just for fillings and surgeries and things. If you want cleaning, you should be able to call up Earl down at Earl's Tooth Detailing Shop. <laughs> to which I I just like the picture of Earl's Tooth Detailing Shop. I was picturing, you know, something by by the, you know, on mm -hmm. the corner of the street. And you've got uh, a, a nice white molar yeah. sign that says Earl's Tooth Detailing Shop. And, the, and it's done in like 1990s, early 2000s, like Max yeah. Headroom, just kind of like with, with like some neon colors. Mm -hmm. And you go in and you sit down and there's Earl or one of Earl's trusted assistants. And you open your mouth and they get and they to just get they down to get business. In there with and, a hose, just, yeah. yeah. And you're in and out in, in 10 minutes or less. You know, it's 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 like Jiffy Lube for your teeth or something like that, except that's longer than 10 minutes. But yeah, um. That's a, actually a fair question. So, I mean, I knew know that people used to get like, like their teeth. If, if they had to have a teeth, a tooth pulled or something, they'd go to like the barber. Cause that was oh, yeah. something barbers did. And, and, and sometime between there and now we're like, Hey, maybe there's a little bit of a difference. Just a little bit of one between taking care of people's hair and taking care of the literal bones inside of their mouth. And, and maybe those two <laughs> things aren't one and the same in, in, in concept, um, which, which I think is, is that that's where society started going downhill. When you can't get your teeth pulled at the dentist, thing, you can't, or you can't get your teeth pulled at the barbershop anymore. When you can't do both of those tasks yeah. at the same time, what, what really is life worth living? Someone points was, out here in the comments okay. that in, in Canada, Dental hygienists can do this. They can set up their own shop mm -hmm. um, just for for cleaning and um, you know ba basic examination, which which is which is the point, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, a, a pedicure. If there's something else going on with your feet, I mean, there's you're you're gonna be able to basically you'll know if you have like a broken toe, right? Usually or something of those lines, but you know, all sorts of. 
all sorts of stuff in the mouth. Yeah. You know, what's going on with your gums? I, you know, I, all, there, there's a lot more that you can unearth that is going wrong. And so it's better to have a trained professional, not necessarily Earl, um, down at Earl's Tooth Detailing Shop. By the way, that to... sound was my cats knocking my switch over. So, hey. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe I do need to get one of the OLED screens. Gotta get you that swollen. Uh, yeah, my cats have been running around in the background. I'm sure Sheriff has been enjoying that. Uh, Stuart's well, behind me right now. So. I've been waiting for the point where something happens. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't actually hear the switch fall on my end because Discord, I think. Yeah. I um, think um So I would say it would be nice if barbers could just do the teeth cleaning just so I could see what the inside of a barber shop looks like again. Oh <laughs> For those for those who don't know, I'm I'm very, very bald. You know, when COVID started, I stopped going to the dar- the barber, which my barber lives literally two d- two doors down from me. Mm-hmm. And um, he he actually offered at the beginning of COVID. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'll get on. I'll get on Facetime and I'll walk you through <laughs> walk you through cuts on your hair." And I very much appreciate it. It never actually happened. Right. Uh, he stood he stood me up. Um, <laughs> so I ended up getting just the just get the clippers and 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 do the buzz cut, which actually I, I've I've come to actually very much appreciate. Um, I can't imagine doing that for any other thing. A doctor like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'll just, yeah, you need, yeah, you need to, you need to get like, you know, uh, a blood test here. I'll just, just jump on FaceTime and, and just buy some (laughs) hypodermic needles. I'll walk you through the whole thing. (laughs) All right. I'm going to teach you how to suture. Let's, let's, let's do your own stitches. You got some. (laughs) Oh, well, they're like, nah, just jump on FaceTime. I'll walk you through. (laughs) I'll walk you through this whole thing. You're going to build your own home. We're going to do it all remotely. Okay, no, you say this, but also during COVID, my my stove exploded, and I mean that literally. My mm-hmm. stove oven, I turned it on, and there was an extremely loud bang, and then black smoke started to pour out of the back of it, mm-hmm. and um, found a remote, um, you know, technician effectively, and it was through, you know, they, they had an app, and it got on the camera. He's like, okay, let's take off this back panel. Let's sh- show me what's going on in there. Of course, we took off the back panel. It turns out that some wires got crossed and literally a piece melted and exploded. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it was, you know, it was legit. The, he, he said, well, there's your problem. I was like, yeah. well, <laughs> thanks. But what he was able to do, though, is he looked at it and he said, okay, I know what part this is. Let me do some searching. And he looked to see what the part is. Like, okay, for your model, that part isn't made anymore. You might be able to get it on eBay or do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Like, how much is this going to cost? He's like, about half as much as just buying a new stove. And I was like, well, you answered my question. He's like, yep. I yeah. said, thank you, sir. And I, I, it, it was, I think it was like thirty bucks for like a, like a one hour consultation. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, that worked fine. Um, Gosh, what else? Uh, obviously, teaching that doesn't work. What are we talking about? Why yeah. would we ever do that? Why would we ever do that online? Um, hmm. All right. Changing the oil of my car. Still something I'm not really. Yeah, that's something. That's something I know how to do, but I don't have good tools to do it, and also. If you mess up the jack, you can die. Um, so that's something I generally just let the professionals. That's handle. something. I know. That's something. I've, I've done it. I've changed oil in a car before, but it was an SUV that I could actually like roll under and be safe. Um, mm-hmm. You know, with the tires there, my Ford Fiesta has almost no ground clearance whatsoever. Oh, and then and and then you lowered it and put those those LED running lights on it that are yeah. just in in West Virginia colors and um just it it, it says Mountaineers as soon as you yeah. go over any any bump. <laughs> um, I I yeah. really appreciate that attention to detail. I do actually have a WV uh, license plate. Um, it actually like my my license plate has a WV insignia on it. I paid extra I, for that. I, I was pulling into my neighborhood today and there was someone running and they were wearing a WV shirt, WVU yeah. shirt. And I did the, the um, Leonardo DiCaprio pointing meme like, Oh, uh, there's <laughs> actually know. video of Leonardo. There's multiple videos of Leonardo DiCaprio with a WVU hat. Oh, yep. So, well then. so uh, that like, like, yeah, I, I, it's just one of those things that like, it's, it's a distinct, it's a distinct symbol. And, I think you see it everywhere just because nobody stays in West Virginia. 
Oh gosh! It, it's the it's the it, it is it is the fastest shrinking state in the country, and I'm not helping that problem since I left. But yeah, but it's wild and wonderful from everything I've been told. Yeah, yeah, I I, I love the it's state. Good it's good skiing. Just, Economically Skiing's doesn't good. have a lot going on. Yeah, great skiing, great nature. Winter place is nice. Yeah. Governor's a bit que questionable. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our governor Actually, kinda so looks the, the, like a Simpsons villain. The uh, <laughs> the the Leonardo DiCaprio, the, the the meme thing, that was my that was gonna be my other question for today was where do memes come from? But mm -hmm. I'll save that for another time because yeah. we are getting yeah. close to time. Unless you have another another anything you want to bring up before we before we wrap it up. No, I, I think I'm I think I'm good. You think you're good? Yeah. Well, there you go. Folks, one of the most precious things that you have during the day is an hour of your time. And you spent some of that hour with us, and we appreciate that so so very much. That precious, precious gift that you uh, have given. Those three hundred <laughs> there are three thousand six hundred seconds. Those three thousand S <laughs> Seconds out of the epic. That, that is time um, between now and nineteen January first, nineteen seventy, that you will never get back. Uh, that is the the, the Unix clock of the universe is slowly approaching twenty thirty eight, and uh, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Moving forward, <sighs> I don't know. Uh, in COVID time, it might have changed. There's some sort of time warping effect. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure during all that. So, um, thank you so much for spending this time with us for this another episode of Regret Request. If you have not had the opportunity to subscribe on the podcast service of your choice, whether that be Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google Podcasts or whatever it may be, go on on there. Give us a subscribe. Give us a review. Anything that you can do to help others find the show would be so welcome. Uh, we really do appreciate every single listener and every single tip that you send out so that others might listen as well. If you have a question, if you have a topic, if you have a theme, if you have, I don't know, a few minutes of your day, you just want to say, hey, Mark, hey, Will, what's up? Here's some email, and it's not from one of your students. Isn't that nice? And we'll say, wow, thank you, kind and generous person. You can reach us at hosts. I just got I got more Southern right there. You can reach us at hosts at regraderequest.com, mark at regraderequest.com, or will at regraderequest.com, and we will... Love to see that. If you have a, vo a voice message you would like to leave for us, you can go to regraderequest.com. If you, you get you get the you get the, the theme here, there's some stuff at that that regraderequest.com mm -hmm. URL, and you can leave us a voicemail that we would love to share with everyone. Or or if you say don't share it and just keep it to ourselves, we'll do that too. But any sort of of feedback you can give us would be fantastic. So for myself. And for Professor Will McBurney, take care, be safe, and watch for falling goats. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Do you think after we have 2.15 billion goats, we're going to start running into problems? Like the goats are going to get all glitchy? That's a lot of goats. They, then they could fall like, through the earth, and then, you know, now, like, you have falling goats everywhere. Feed them with bananas. Yeah. We, I mean, Floppy bananas. Well, I mean, they'll be able to get through the skins more easily.